There is no map, there's no instructions, there's no rule book. There's only uncertainty, so each day we get to learn something new that has never been known before. And to me, that is, that is what drives me. 32 years old, proud father and ETH professor, Randall Platt has an extraordinary biography. At DBSSE in Basel, he and his team developed genome engineering tools. If we were to take a snapshot of the world today, would that tell us everything about our history and how we got here? Of course it wouldn't. So in the laboratory today, most scientists perform time point experiments in which they break open cells and measure DNA, RNA, and protein. And those results are restricted to that single moment in time. The key word here is moment, and thus it's a snapshot. In my group, we take a very different approach to this problem. We engineer cells to be their own biographers. We endow cells with the capacity to essentially write down what is happening to them. Invasive examinations, such as colonoscopies, could soon be a thing of the past. So the alternative that we're trying to present is a situation where you just simply consume a yogurt, which passes through your body, and then you send a sample to the laboratory, and through DNA sequencing and computational analysis, we should be able to diagnose seemingly any disorder of the gut, for example, colon cancer. Transcriptional recording technology is similar to the leap from a still camera to a video camera. You can use it in many different avenues. It is just a simple tool that we can send and ship to different scientists where they can put it in their cells of interest and start to investigate how these cells change over time. Another method recently developed by his team is fueling progress in biomedical research. It is based on the well-known CRISPR-Cas gene editing method. Now it is possible to modify dozens of genes simultaneously in single cells. I never worked alone on any of these projects. There was always a large group of us trying to solve the problem together. In 2016, he became ETH's youngest assistant professor and has remained true to his principles. In my mind, my group isn't following me. We are working together. They make as many decisions as I do. If you ask my team, uh, I generally say it's a democratic process, and I think this is how we do it. Despite his increased responsibilities, the family man always leaves his lab in Basel on time. So one thing so great about the ETH is they take risks and invest in young scientists. So when I applied to the ETH, I had just turned 28 years old, I hadn't finished my PhD, and my colleagues here at the ETH, they saw something in me or my application, and they had the audacity to invite me here, interview, and hire me. And so they really trust young scientists and nurture them and mentor them and enable them to fulfill their whole potential. And with this level of support and infrastructure, you can really ask big, difficult, and high-risk type of questions. Just for the record, what'd you eat today? Chocolate. Chocolate? What? 